Hey guys, how's it going? It's Target here. Welcome back to another episode of the Colorado Avalanche. Be a GM. Uh, thanks for your input from before the last episode when we did the trade deadline. I really appreciate you guys' comments. Unfortunately, we weren't able to make any moves. We needed to make some moves, though. Uh, our goaltending is not as strong as it should be, and uh, our top line just really does not have any elite talent. Um, we worked with what we had, basically. We didn't have enough assets to make any moves. So if you haven't really watched that episode yet, make sure you go back and watch it just to see what we did try. Uh, we're going to be into the playoffs, no doubt about it. So what we're going to do is finish up the year here, and then we'll analyze how the team did. A complete breakdown of how everything went. Um, that is that. I'll go up to the 14th. So we got Columbus here. They're a decent team. 43-28-4. Uh, as a 5-4 loss. Looks like that was in uh, overtime, though. I think that's our sixth overtime loss. Yeah, I think so. Uh, so Tyler Myers is having a great year for us. He's got the most assists on the entire team. There's another two. That's a loss in overtime. All right, that's fine. I can handle that. Got St. Louis. I should stop this and see how far back we are right now. Or what our, what our position is within the division. There's a loss. Okay, I'm going to stop the simulation here. It's going to probably do one more game. Come on, beat the Pens. Oh, my God. So loss, loss, loss. Um... Wow, we right now are currently playing for that final spot. So we need some wins here. We need to finish out strong. Okay, so we're going to go game by game. Uh, we need to finish above St. Louis and above Chicago would be nice. Um, just so we have the top placement. So we got Edmonton first. There you go. There's a win. So where does that put us? Uh, that puts us currently still in the same spot because everybody else won. We'll go up to San, San Jose. Got to beat Vancouver. Come on, guys. You can do it. You can do this. We need to finish about 92 points. Oh, there's a loss, and it was in regulation. Where does that put us now? Um, wow. Okay, so, yeah, we're still on the cusp. We need another win here. How many games we got left? Two. So, one against San Jose. This is a big win for us. We need this win right here. There you go. There's a win. Very, very nice. Um, so, it puts us at 91 points. So, right now, if we win the last game, we're basically into the playoffs. And without, don't have to play the, the playoff games. You know what I mean? The, the playoff playoff, I'm going to call it. It's the, it's the, what do you call it? Stupid thing. I can't remember what you call that anymore. Play down, something like that. Oh, for God's sake. So 5-2, a loss for us. We're 91 points. Where is Chicago? Let's go take a look at stats, team standings. Uh, we clinched. So we clinched a playoff spot. That's nice. Let's look at the Western Conference. Actually, let's look at the division. We're Division B. So Chicago clinched. So they are done. They've played. Okay, so nice. We will play... Either Chicago or Winnipeg, depending on who wins that. So Winnipeg is going to basically play Chicago in a play down. I think that's how it's working. That's how it should work anyway. Um, we'll have to see how it goes. Anyway, let's take a look at the entire league. Analyze our team, how we did. Uh, goals for per game, we finished in 30th. Dead last, so we were terrible. Uh, goals against per game, we were 15th. So that dropped a little bit over the course of the year, but not bad, I guess, for a team that was really should have rebuilt, but we didn't. Uh, power play... We're in 16th. That's way better than the w what it was before. I mean, we were in 29th, 30th for that. And our penalty kill, 8th. So we were in first for a while with that. It looks like a drop, but I'm not too unhappy about that. I really like that. <coughs> Pardon me. Uh, let's take a look at player stats. I usually give players a letter grade. For those of you that haven't followed one of my BAGMs before, that's how it works. I usually give my players a letter grade on how they did in terms of what we expected from this, them this year. Okay, and then you also take into account where they played. So... P.A. Parento was our leading scorer, if you can believe it or not. Um, because he's a second-line player, I'm going to give him an A-. minus. He could have been better. I like to see my second-line players around 60 points. But because he's the leading scorer, he gets a little bit of a boost. So he's an A-. minus. Landeskog, he was a second-line player, but he finished at 87 overall. My God. Um, that's a big deal for him. Uh, but 45 points. That's just not enough. Not enough. I mean, what's his ratings? He can do better than that. There's no doubt about it. Gabriel Landeskog can do much, much better than that. Um, so we're going to give him probably just a B. Uh, Matt Duchesne, he's going to get a B- minus because he got 44 points and he's an 87 overall center. He stayed there the whole year. He should have done way better than that. But you know what? A lot of it could do with the player he played with. The players he played with. Um, sorry. Uh, Eliash, 41 points. He's a second line sniper. He, you know what? He scored the goals. He did what he, he, did what he needed to do. Uh, I'd give him probably, let's give him a B. Uh, Ryan O'Reilly is a second line player. Again, not a bad job. I'm going to give him a B. Tyler Myers, though, absolutely an A. Probably the best result for our team because he's he had 32 assists this year. That's great. That's He's the player that we picked up. 
Uh, right at the beginning, or I guess it was episode 4, you guys suggested throughout episode 1, 2, and 3 to pick up Tyler Myers because of his trade value, and it was a very good suggestion because he led the team in assists and led defense with uh, points as well. Uh, Tarasenko, he finished with 38 points. That's a nice number. Is that his second year? Yeah, it's his second NHL season. A big increase for him, but he only played 38 games the first year, so... You know what, Tarasenko, that's probably on par. I'd like to see more from him next year, that's for sure. Eric Johnson, 34 points. How is that in comparison to last year? Uh, that's about 8 points, 9, 10 points. So that's a big jump for him. Big jump for him. Good job there, Johnson. Uh, Tyson Berry, is it his first NHL year? Oh, no, no, he's played some in the past. Um, but a good year for him again. Like, if you look at his last NHL year, uh, he played basically 64 games and got 26 points. Or, yeah, 26 points over 64 games. Uh, so not bad for Barry. You definitely saw some increase there. <coughs> Cam Fowler, how did you do? You're an offensive defenseman who doesn't look like you produced too much. But 29 points over 82 games is exactly the same as he did in 2011-12. Uh, but he is, his minus is much better. So that's really good for him. Uh, I kind of stopped giving people grades. That's okay. We're just going to analyze here. Nick Antropov, 27 points. Third line center. Did pretty well, though, in that role, I would say. Uh, not as good as this year or this year, but... Uh, not bad, I guess, considering what we made him play. Colby Armstrong, a fourth-line grinder with 20 points. That is really nice. Uh, not as good as this year, obviously, like 2010, 2011, but not bad. Uh, hey Duke had 20 points. I'd like to see more from a third-line sniper, but you know what? Really, he's a fourth-line sniper. Uh, we could. That's something we're going to have to look at in the offseason, adding a third-line sniper, because that's really made a difference for us in the past. Steve Downey, 18 points. Not too bad. Uh, Ryan Wilson, 16 points. Mitchell, 16 points. McGinn, 13 points. And Sarich, 5. Yeah, he finished last. Um, but what's his plus minus like? 9. See, yeah, he had really good plus minus for being on the bottom line. Wow, our bottom line was really good. Nope, not Mitchell. Wilson was good. Yeah, our bottom line. McGinn, Ron Wilson. How's Downey? Minus 8. How was Hayduke? Minus 3. Everybody was mostly minus, weren't they? Ah, and Armstrong finished even. <coughs> Pardon me. Uh, so let's look at goal oh, goaltending here quickly. Uh, goalies. All right, so Varlamov played 68 games and Jaguar played 16. Uh, Varlamov finished with a 92-37. That's not bad at all. Not bad at all. Uh, he had 12 shutouts. That might be good enough for best in the league. Let's see. Let's see what best most shutouts in the league. Yeah, Varlamov had the most shutouts, the most shutouts in the league, which is insane. Uh, I can't believe that at all. In terms of save percentage, where did he finish? Probably well back. Looks like he's well back. Uh, Varlamov, where are you at? 19th, so, you know, not really great. Uh, but a goals against, where's a goals against average here? Uh, this doesn't really tell the goalie, but where is Varlamov? Oh, this is goals against average high. Okay, hold on. Who's got the lowest? Well, I don't remember what his number was, but Varlamov, he's in 20, 23rd? He's in 23rd in the league, I guess. All right, that's not bad, I guess. Okay. Anyway, so that's it for the year, guys. We're through that. We're going to sim up here and find out exactly. Oh, you know what? Before we do that, GM options. We'll do player growth or player reports. We'll find out who did the best in terms of player growth. Probably, yeah, Gabriel Laniscog went from an 85 to an 87. Eric Johnson went from an 85 to an 86. Uh, Jamie McGinn had a little bit of progress but didn't go up. Uh, let's take a look at our AHL team. Uh, Reed went up one. Hurd st stayed the same and Elliott went up one. Uh, how about our goal, our goaltending there? I didn't check that last time. Yeah, it looks like, wow, Picard went up three overall in, during the season. He went, he had 13 attributes modified. He did really well on that. Um, <coughs> pardon me. Oh, you can do page up, page down? Oh, my God, I'm retarded. Okay. Uh, I want to take a look at our goalies. Varo Mafia, he didn't do it all. He didn't do it all. Okay, so we'll do quickly before we get into this, our uh, GM tracker. We'll upgrade this, and then we'll take a look. Looks like that's all we can do. Let's upgrade the assistant coach, I guess. Okay, I don't know what's going to do for us. Somebody said it doesn't help your player player growth, but I think that's incorrect. I think it does. Okay, so we're going to be playing the St. Louis Blues. Um, so I don't know if there's a play down. I guess there's no play down. Let's go to uh, Stat Central. We'll go to Playoff Tree, and I'll take a look. There is no play down. So, yeah, it's it's short, sorted this way. So, one, two, three, four. Is there crossover? There must be crossover. Because, look, Edmonton's playing Chicago. Vancouver's playing Anaheim. 
we're playing St. Louis and Calgary's playing Nashville. Um, let me take a look here. Yeah, it's all going to be NH or playoff stats. Uh, let's do team standings, I guess, and we'll sort by division. So yeah, Edmonton, there is crossover for sure. It's in. I'll be. In, I'm gonna have to look into this and how it works, but. Uh, Yeah, it, it, there's no play down, I guess. I, I thought the NHL decided they were going to do play downs. Maybe not. Just going to do crossover. So let's see. Uh, Edmonton was playing. Let's just see how this works. So let me just write it down here because I'll forget. So Edmonton's playing Chicago. Um, that's 1 4. And then we were 3, so we played. It's It just crosses over, is how it works. So you basically, if you finish third in Group B, you'll play the second team in Group A. So that was St. Louis. So we'll take a look here, and I'll take a look at team standings, and we'll see if that's true. So St. Louis, if they're second in that division in Group A, no. Oh. So it's just a crossover from one to four. So Edmonton will play Chicago. And then Vancouver is playing, Vancouver is playing Anaheim. And then Calgary is playing Nashville, and then so you play so two and three stay in the same division, one and four cross over. Okay, I got you now. I'm I'm with them now. Okay, so we're into the playoffs. We'll simulate up to this day. We'll compare the teams. I feel like we're not in a good spot, but you know what? You never know. Let's do this. Coaching options, view lines. Take a look at what St. Louis is packing. Okay, so first off, we have two eighty-seven players, eighty-seven overalls. We got Landeskog and Duchesne. And then Patrick Elias is our sniper on that line. Then on the second line, we've got Parento, O'Reilly, and Tarasenko. So a nice balance, 84, 84, 83. A good second line, actually. A really good second line. Third line is a little bit off. I'd like Hayduke to be better, but we've got, uh, we've got Antropov with Downey and Hayduke. And then finally, we've got McGinn with Mitchell and Armstrong. So the fourth line is not bad either. Uh, defense, Eric Johnson and Tyler Myers are our top pairing defensemen. And then we've got Cam Fowler and Tyson Berry. And then uh, Ron Wilson and Corey Sarich. Uh, goaltending... We've got Varlamov. He's 81 overall, if it'll go there. Okay, so we are playing St. Louis. So we'll go to St. Louis. <coughs> so the top line, we've got them beat, I think, because we've got two 87s and an 83. They've got an 87 and two 85s. Uh, the second line, we've got them beat because they've got Stastny, Sabotka, and Steen. And then the third line, they've got us beat for sure. Berglund, Wah, and Piarvi. And the fourth line, we've got them beat. So we've got one and two. They've got three and four. Uh, defense, they've got the better defense. No doubt about it. The top line, second line, and third line. Uh, goaltending, Halak. Yeah, 85 overall. So they're doing a lot better than us in that category as well. Okay, so this will be interesting, guys. So this is it. This is our very first Be a GM playoff. We're with the Colorado Avalanche against the St. Louis Blues. Let's jump right in here and see how things go. Okay, first period of game one. It is in St. Louis. That's going to be the case for probably most of the playoffs. First period, 1-1 one, one the score. Okay, so Tyler Myers gets one for us. Roman Polak scores one for them. Is that Roman Polak, isn't it? I think so. Second period. 3-2. to two. There you go. Patrick Eliash scores. Stewart had one, but Downey had the other one. All right, we go to uh, the third period now. I'm, I'm slowing it down a little bit here. Shots are pretty even. They've got... Oh, never mind. They've, the spread is up now. They've got a few more shots. We're shooting, though. Come, oh, no shots here. Time to get down, and that is it. There you go, boys. Game one goes to the Colorado Avalanche. That's the way I like to see it. That's the way I like to see it. Okay. Uh, we're going to go up to now game two. In St. Louis. So if you can take a game on the road in the playoffs, that's a big, big deal. Uh, it's tough to do. It's tough to win on the road. Uh, any other goalies? Let's take a look at that uh, OHL one. He's a three and a half gold star right now. He's not somebody we're going to want to chase probably. Uh, let's see. Let's see what they got Reinhardt as. Let's scout for another month here. I want to make sure we figure out how good Reinhardt is. Uh, let's do game two. Here we go. In St. Louis. First period, one nothing. we're down. Okay, so Paul Stastny scores on us. All right, a little retribution. That's okay. We got 11 shots. They only managed eight in that one. So maybe we can keep the shots going and one will go our way. Second period, oh no, definitely did not. Stastny strikes again. So does Sabotka. We're in a rough rough spot here. I'm just going to sim. I'm just going to skip it. 
And 5-1 the final. Downey scored, but that's not enough. We need some scoring from our top line. We outshot them, but man oh man did they outscore us. So, we're going to have to do better. Series is tied 1-1. That's not bad considering we are the underdog in this series. And this is our first year. We're in the playoffs, so I can't, I can't really be upset about that. All right, here we go. We go to game three. This is in our home rink now, in Colorado at the Pepsi Center. First period, 1-0. There you go. So Tyson Berry scores on Yaroslav Halak. Second period now. Oh, still 1-0. We're going to definitely slow this down here because this is going to be intense. Close game here. All right, shots are in our favor. We continue to shoot. Oh, we got a power play. Oh, nothing done. There you go. Jamie McGinn scores. Excellent. There you go. Time ticking down. Halfway through the third. Three quarters of the way through. Two minutes. One minute. There you go, 2-0 the final in Game 3. Colorado Avalanche with a 2-1 series lead on the St. Louis Blues. I think these divisional games are going to be an absolute blast. It's going to be so much cooler to have that intense rivalry. Um, stop simulation. Alright. Game 4 in Colorado. Can we win another game here? First period. Oh, 1-1. One, one. Okay, so Landeskog scores. I believe that's his first of the playoffs. Chris Stewart had the first to start uh, start the game. Second period. Oh, we're down 2-1. to one. Paul Stastny with his third goal against us. Let's go to the third period. We're going to slow it down. One. Oh, there you go. Colby Armstrong from the fourth line ties it up. We've got 12, 10 minutes left here now. We're out shooting them by a little bit. It's pretty close, though. There you go. P.A. Parento scores. 3.45 left in the period. 4-2. Matt DeShane puts the icing on the cake. And the Colorado Avalanche have a 3-1 series lead over the St. Louis Blues. You gotta love that. Gotta love to see that. Um, who are the three stars? Three stars. Semyon Varlamov, Matt Duchesne, P.A. Parento. Very good. Nicely done, boys. I like to see that. We go now to Game 5 in St. Louis. Alright, so it's home ice advantage for them. But we do have that 3-1 series lead. And you know what? The Colorado Avalanche are tired of finishing at the bottom of the standings. They want it now. They're in the playoffs, and they're going for it all. Here we go. Game 5. At the, is it still the Scott Trade Center? I believe it is. First period. 1-0. There you go. Mitchell scores for us from that fourth line again. Second period. 2-0. Matt Duchesne rips a slapper home past Yaroslav Halak. We go to the third period now. We need to shoot 13 shots in this period. That's what I want from you guys. All right. 14 minutes left, 10 minutes left, no goal scored for them yet, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, there you go, Cam Fowler buries the empty net, and the Colorado Avalanche have defeated the St. Louis Blues in the first round of the Stanley Cup playoffs, unbelievable performance, let's, uh, let's sim up and find out exactly who we're going to be playing in the second round, great job boys, I think it's going to be a divisional rival, I think we're probably going to play who, fin who played, um, or who won the 1v4? Well, it would be anyway. One of those pairings. And it's going to be the Nashville Predators. So they were the best team in our division. It's going to be tough sledding against them because they are a strong team. Uh, let's take a look at stats. Uh, save percentage first. So Varlamov is up there for goals against average. A 939 save percentage. So he posted a very, very good five games. Uh, points. We aren't up there. We're, we're up there for uh, wins, but we're not up there for points. Uh, goals and assists, no, because we got two and three. It's just not quite enough to make the cut, but that doesn't matter. It's not about the stats. It's about the way the team wins, and uh, five games to win a series, that's really good. So there you go, boys. The Colorado Avalanche are through to the second round of the Stanley Cup playoffs. Stay tuned for more BGM coming out very soon. Until next time, guys, I'm Target Audience. You guys have a good one.